Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the mach -E Vlog. We've owned this beautiful blue Mustang mach -E, or as we call it, Blucifer, for <laughs> one year. And this is our review. We're kicking off this review out here at the High Plains Raceway. We're actually not allowed to go in, but we thought this was a pretty cool spot. It's not somewhere that you normally see out here in the Eastern Plains of Colorado, but we're gonna take you on an adventure today while we talk about what we feel about our Mach -E after owning it for a year. Having the mach -E is so convenient. While I'm getting ready at home, I can just say, I'll be ready in 10 minutes and Patrick will have the car ready. It's nice, especially say when it's frosty, it's nice and warm and it's waiting for us and it's ready to go. Also, it's always fully charged. There's no stopping at gas stations and I cannot even tell you, I can't express, I mean, you probably get it. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing that it's always fully charged. And I know that this is a general EV thing, so that's great. Every single EV will be this amazing in that it's always fully charged. Amazing, right? <laughs> we, we were out here too late. Decided to lock. <laughs> it's mad because we're not driving it. Of course, one of the biggest reasons that we bought the mach -E is because we like how it looks. And I think a lot of people like how it looks. We get a lot of attention when we're out and about in the mach -E, people asking us about it. And I know a lot of it is the, the color grabber blue, but it does have a lot of Mustang influence in it. The long hood, with a lot of curves that you can see like from inside the car. Um, some other cars that we've driven, it's, it doesn't even feel like there's a hood. You can see the hood from inside the car as you're driving. And that's a traditional Mustang influence as well as like the headlights. They have a very Mustang look as well. Um, and by the way, the Grabber Blue is a color that dates back to the 1969 Mustang. So this, this color on Mustangs has been around quite a while. Back then, the, it wasn't a metallic. This one is a metallic, so that's that looks really nice. And the Mustang influences continue along the side of the car. So it, it can be hard to tell, but at certain angles, you can really see the rear fenders flare out a bit, rear haunches. That gives it a, a wider, aggressive stance. And of course, to keep it looking a bit like a fastback, the roof line goes up here. This has been talked about a lot. It gives you a lot of headroom. But because it swoops back, it gives it a very uh, fast back aerodynamic look. I love that. Looks really sleek from the side. And then of course, one of my favorite Mustang elements, the car's really dirty. We just went through like a week of snow, but the tri-bar tail lights. This is like one of the most famous things, uh, recognizable things from Mustangs since 1965 is the tri-bar tail lights. And they operate sequentially when you turn on your blinkers. Nice little cool design element and another pony logo in the back. So a lot of neat little features. And again, like one of the, the big things is the, the color, the metallic really plays in the sun, but there's a lot of great colors on the Mach-E. We originally were gonna order a rapid red. I love the rapid red. If you haven't seen that, we'll put some up now, but we've also checked out uh, the infinite blue, which I didn't think I would like, but that's a, a great color. It's, unfortunately no longer available there's two whites there's a space white and a star white which sounds funny like there's two different whites but yes there's two different whites and they're subtly different and both of them look fantastic so the looks of the mach -E are just absolutely cool and fantastic and one of our big reasons why we chose it I really, really love the amount of storage in this car. I love that it's an SUV. We get a huge amount of space. Uh, we have a couple of videos that I can link uh, about how much space there is back here, but we can fit my wheelchair in with this, with the seats up. We can fit my trike in, a recumbent trike, which is enormous, fully assembled with the seats down. And here we have so much storage and we have a really nice organizer, but we can fit my hula hoop, everything that we need. I love the storage and I think it is pretty expensive and one of the larger storage areas of, of this kind of vehicle. I think we both really like taking the mach -E on road trips. It is a fantastic road trip vehicle. Before we got an EV, we had some 
range anxiety. And even when we first had the Maki, we had some range anxiety, but it's been great on road trips. I believe Inside EVs did a 70 mile per hour range test and they, they exceeded the 270 mile rated range for the Maki. We found that in general, you know, depending on where we're going, we can come close to or exceed the range. Now going through Utah at 80 miles an hour or maybe slightly higher, we don't get the 270 miles of range and, and it varies, you know, with cold temperatures, it, it dips as well. But overall, the range has been fantastic with the mach -E. uh, Around town or like just driving around Denver, we can get well into 300 and some miles per charge. On road trips where we're more worried about actual charging, it doesn't get uh, that 300 miles, we've got, you know, 240, 250, 270, depending on where we're at. But finding charging has been great. The Electrify America network fueled our trip all the way to San Diego and back with no issues. And we're actually driving right now to an Electrify America station. It's super easy with Electrify America. You literally um, just plug in and it starts charging. Finding the charging stations is really easy. The the Ford Sync system, I can tell it that I want to navigate all the way to San Diego, tell it to go, and it will find the charging stations for me, tell me how long I got to stop at each charging station and how much I need to charge to. Handles all of that for me so I don't even need to think about it. And then it navigates for me so that I can see it on the main screen. But it also, because the mach -E has a driver screen, it's great. It, it puts it on the driver screen for me as well. Super simple and has been perfect in our use. Like we, every single time we've, we've charged with no issues. The other thing that is great about the mach -E on the road trips is all of the driver assistance features that the mach -E has. Right now I have uh, intelligent cruise control with lane centering on. So that means it's going to adjust my speed based on the speed limit that it knows because it knows where I'm at via GPS, but it can also read speed limit signs. It'll slow down, but it just slowed down for me because I was coming up on traffic that was doing 65 instead of 75. And of course it's also doing the lane centering, which means you know as we're coming up to this curve here, I gotta keep my hands on the steering wheel, but it's actually doing the, the steering for me. And I like that when I wanna do a lane change, I just put the blinker on, I navigate to the new lane, and then uh, turn the blinker off, and it turns on the, the uh, lane turning again for me, no, no problem. We don't have Blue Cruise, which is disappointing, because Ford promised that we would have that at, by the end of 2021. We're now into 2022, and we're being told that we should get it via an over-the-air update by the end of uh, March, by the end of the first quarter of 2022. And I didn't think I would really care whether or not we had Blue Cruise. And what that is, is like I could go completely hands-free for miles and miles, as long as I'm paying attention to the road. Um, and I didn't think I would really care that, that much one way or the other about that little uh, added feature. But after experience it, experiencing it in a Mach-E GT that we drove out in Pasadena, California, we'll put a link to that video, it was really nice having Blue Crew. So I'm looking forward to getting that upgrade and hopefully Ford will push that out in the next month or so to meet their March 31st deadline because I'm looking forward to giving it a try on, on roads like this. I could gesture with you with both hands all the time because it would be hands-free. Anytime someone takes a look inside the mach -E, one of the first things they notice, of course, is the giant screen and uh, how big it is. And they ask me, how useful is it a distraction? I think it's actually been great. I've gotten very used to it. I love that there is a big screen, but I am very pleased that we still have a driver's screen here that gives me like my range, my navigation directions, what my driver's assist is doing, my current speed, as well as where it, what the current speed limit is. 
great to have that information. But going back to the, the big screen here, I find that it's very useful. The, the layout is very easy to navigate. The fonts are big enough so that it's very easy for me just to glance over and see like my tire pressure. The Monkey is probably the first car I've driven, including cars I've owned and rental cars, where I actually like the built-in navigation system. So we're actually on our way to an Electrify America charger and the car you know, did the navigation, added in the charging stop. Very easy to, to use for planning uh, trips, but it also has some, some really cool stuff. So there's a lot of uh, added features that really make this navigation system great. Of course, it, it knows uh, what the traffic is like and it has done a great job of like routing me, routing me around traffic jams when necessary. But it also has some like cool features like it can bring up the weather and show like what's, what is the forecast hourly and even has a uh, radar, which there's, there's no rain anywhere right now. Of course, I love the fact that there is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I most of the time use Android Auto so I can have my music and whatnot, but I can access that through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So whatever services I have on my phone are available via those systems. There's a couple of games. We can't do games while the car is in motion. Those were recently added. And they're, they're fairly basic games, but it's not like I really care. Uh, other cool features, it has like, I can monitor my tire pressure um, under radio. Of course we have FM radio, but we also have satellite radio with Sirius XM. We won't turn any of that on. But if you notice up here, it has AM radio, which might not be a big deal to the majority of people, but there are a lot of people, and, and me included, that occasionally like being able to listen to AM radio uh, for traffic or news or, or whatever. So that's nice, nice little feature that is often overlooked when people are looking at cars. And Sirius XM is nice to have. Uh, some of our road trip across Utah, for example, there are there's no reception, no nothing out there. But of course, satellite works. And those are the apps, but there's also a lot of settings that you can get into. Of course, the basic one that you access most often is our is your drive modes. That's what comes up every time you hit on the. Uh, oh, I thought it, it was an orange car. I thought it was going to be a uh, Mach E GT, but it's not. Anyways. Uh, the first thing that comes up is like your drive modes. Very easy just to tap and switch drive modes. I swiped it, not tapped it. So I just switched from engage back to whisper. Um, and then of course there's a ton of settings which I won't access now because we're driving. That's great for when you're parked. Everything's super easy to access. And as I said, what I really like, the fonts are big enough that it's very easy to see while I'm driving. And as you can also see, the system is fairly responsive. It's, there's no lag, it's, it's all good to go. Like Patrick said, the Maki is really good for road trips. We took that one epic trip and we'll link one of the videos up. We have a couple of it. It was 2,200 miles from Denver to San Diego and back. And the Maki was really awesome. It was an awesome vehicle. The range was enough. It was enough for us to get between stops um, to the point that we needed to go to the bathroom before the car needed charging. Uh, there's definitely things that you have to get used to that's a little different with road tripping in an electric vehicle. Um, but I kind of liked it. Like it encourages you to stop a little longer. But for example, right now we're driving to an Electrify America station where we're going to charge about 40% uh, total or something going to take 15 minutes. So it's not like you have to get used to much longer stops, but it certainly is an adjustment if you're one of those pop in and, and go people, um, which we, we kind of on. So I, I'm not. So I appreciate the longest stops. I think the mach -E itself is an excellent road tripper. It's a really nice orange that drove by us, but I do love our grabber blue. This has enough range for what we need. And the only problems that we occasionally had at charging stations was when we'd pull in and like the 
the specific charger would be down. So you'd have to move to the next one or something. I think that's probably the only problems that we've really had. Yeah, and as I mentioned in another video, if Electri America had a bigger out of order thing, it would be no problem. But it just seems like I, you know, like you pick the slow line at the grocery store, I picked the one charger out of four that was down. Yeah. If there was one down. And that's not related to the Maki, that is Electrify America and, and just charging an electric vehicle in general. But it's gonna get better and we know that. The Maki itself, super great for road trips. Granted, last time that we went on a road trip, we did not have the update yet, so the charging would drop at 80%. Now, it, it holds pretty steady till 90, right? It holds really well like I, when I did my test it held really well to 95% it was still doing uh, 43 kilowatts just shy of 95 and then as soon as it hit 95 it started tapering down but that's a fairly marked improvement over the 11 kilowatts it was doing previously above 80% it's a huge improvement so it'll be really interesting like maybe we need to redo the road trip that we did last year before this update we certainly will notice a difference in uh, new road trips that we do but I, I think that'll change our experience too because we're almost gonna be able to charge to 100% at, at most stops if we need to if we need to if I need a hula hoop a bit I find the Maki -E extremely comfortable and it's something that I love about this vehicle we have sat in the GT and the GT performance and I do enjoy those seats the side bolstering is really comfortable but these seats are no slouches they're really comfortable as well they're comfortable on road trips and now that the weather has been colder I'm actually really enjoying the seat warmers for back pain so sometimes I'll put the seat warmer on I, I get a lot of back pain especially as an MPT don't know about you guys but I'll put the seat warmer on just to make my back feel better and it's an odd little therapeutic benefit that I hadn't thought of obviously I won't be doing that in the summer though probably. We'll crank the air conditioning up and I'll do it. <laughs> there are tons of features that I really enjoy about the Maki -E that make it even more comfortable. My weird little thing that I like the side-by-side -side cup holders. I like that there is a drink spot in the door. And another thing I really like is that we have our own little leg area. So for example, the Ionic 5 is just a big gap in the front. So if you put any in your footwell it could roll around and I always have something in the footwell I have some kind of beverage I have my purse I have a tissue box and since we film there's a GoPro on the floor so I like that that this is kind of enclosed that's a weird little plus and I know I said this in our previous review video but I still really enjoy that I can reach into the middle cubby without disturbing Patrick like you move drop if you don't have to no I know <laughs> so, I thought you were going to flip it up no, I mean, like if I want to reach in and get a single glove, like you do, I can do that without disturbing him. We've now driven in our premium, basically, our first edition Maki, the GT and the GT Performance, and there definitely is a ride difference. This, basically the premium, is lovely. We're on a bad road right now. It's bumpy at multiple bumps and it feels really smooth. It's certainly not as smooth as it would be if we had a GT Performance with Magna Ride, but I do think it's smoother than it would be if we were in the regular GT. And it is so much smoother than most of the cars I've been in. So much smoother than your old WRX. And quieter. And quieter, it's yeah. It's very quiet. Yeah, it is, it is very quiet. It's no Mercedes EQS, but it's very quiet. Since we've had the vehicle, we have added a couple things, mostly just accessories that you guys have seen. Some, one in particular that I really love are the rubber mats that we're using right now. It's just so nice to keep the Maki clean versus the carpet mats that came with it. An addition that I do really still wanna do, and I just keep forgetting, is that we need to tint these front windows. As you can see, there's a glaring white over here. It's bright. It's the only bright spot in the car. The gloss roof, fantastic. The back window is phenomenal. This front window needs some tinting. You ready? Ready. Oh my goodness. Wow. Of course. One of the fun things about the Maki -E 
is the performance. We don't even have the GT or GT Performance Edition, but even just the all-wheel drive extended range has some, some fun stuff to it. I rarely ever do a zero to 60 or need to do zero to 60, maybe getting on the freeway, but it's just so much fun every once in a while to do something like that. It's fun, uh, you know, zipping around town and driving, having that instant torque is a lot of fun. Um, and I enjoy how easy it is. It does zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds compared to my WRX that I traded in for this that did zero to 60 in about five seconds. That could do it in about five seconds, but that was revving the engine, dropping the clutch, hitting the shift perfectly. And everybody around you noticed it. The Mach-E literally just step on the pedal. It's super quiet and gets you to 60 in under five seconds. So I, I love it. It's a lot of fun. Rarely do I have a need to do that, but uh, it puts a smile on my face when I, when I do use a little bit of that torque. And to be honest, most of the time it's at zero to like 30 miles an hour at a stoplight or something like that. That is the most fun. That's that's when you can just sort of take off if you need to change lanes quickly. So I, I like that. And again, it's not the GT version. Um, I still think it handles pretty darn well. It's a lot of fun driving on curvy mountain roads, uh, driving around town. It has the the quickness that I like. It's not super crazy fast, but it's really quick for what we do on our normal lives. So it's a lot of fun, feels fun, and that's the main thing. It's like, as long as it feels fun, thumbs up. One of the negatives about owning this Mustang Mach-E is that we are not rich <laughs> and this car is really nice. It's so nice that we're kind of too scared to take it to crappy parts of town or to even take it out in bad weather because it's kind of a baby. Here we are uh, in the Eastern Plains of Colorado, nothing but space around us and this is not at all typical. Normally we're in city driving, we're bad streets and this is Colorado in the winter so there's snow as well. So that's a real con for me is that it's such a beautiful car that we're kind of scared to take it to bad places. We investigate before we go, we'll look and see where we're gonna park, is there indoor parking, is it just on street parking? And there are a lot of cool safety features in the Mach-E that make it really desirable to drive in bad weather and things like that. But I'm scared too because we don't wanna damage our baby. <laughs> Another con about the Mach-E is that it is a Mustang. <laughs> it's weird having a car that's controversial. So we try to keep an open mind and let people have whatever opinion they want, but ultimately the people who made Mustang made their new Mustang and it's the Mach-E, it's electric, this is our car. So it's not really up for debate, it's a Mustang. So it can get a little tiring having to argue with people and be open-minded about this. So I guess we'd call that a con, that our car is up for debate. Well, that's it for our one year review for our Mustang Mach-E. As you can tell, we really love this car and we're excited for a lot more new adventures this coming year. And we'll hope you'll join us. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell and you'll be right there with us as we hit the road. Stay tuned. Oh, hey. Hi. Hey. hey. Thanks for jumping in the back seat with us. We really love making this content for you guys and we love advocating and educating about electric vehicles. For sure. On that note, we wanna keep making this content and we wanna keep getting better. And you can help us by joining our brand new Patreon that we just launched. And you get some benefits and perks out of that too. So if people don't support you on Patreon, you're gonna stop making videos? No, we're gonna keep making them, of course. We love doing this. Oh, okay, so you're not gonna try to get better at it? No, no, we're, we're still gonna try to get better, but it could just be easier if we had a little bit of support. Okay, so what do we get? Depending on the level that you sign up for, it can be quite a few things. Patreon only post, it could be behind the scenes footage and photos, access to our library of over 200 wallpapers for your phone, laptop, whatever. And we may do shout outs in YouTube videos for you. And who knows, there may be even some trinkets that we will send out. Like a pony? No, not a pony. Gift certificates? 
No, like a postcard from the road or stickers or something. But people can still just watch your videos for free on YouTube, right? Yeah, of course they can. Just hopefully they like subscribe and like the video. That's free. And of course, always share it with your friends and Facebook groups and all that other good stuff. Maybe. Maybe. Drive the car.